I am a chain belt in Kung Fu. Bruce Lee was my teacher. Watch this. What? Tell how you beat on the cop. Wasn't no cop, man. It was cops. Plural. Nine, ten cops. Beat the shit out of ten cops and had to change my whole strategy around. Yo. Yo, when you walked downstairs yesterday, you was crying like a baby. Yeah. That's cause it's one of the cops fell. He threw tear gas in my face. And that's the kind of shit they use on crowds, man. I still walk in here like a man, so get out of my face, man. Right? You lifted all these weights. You out here every morning making a bunch of noise. How come we don't see no marks on you? Yeah. Cause I'm a karate man, all right? Karate man bruise on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Deadlifting, the channel where a guy with three kids, a desk job, a wife, a gym in his garage, talks about his accumulated wisdom in the fitness, nutrition realm, and whatever else he's thinking about. So, today, I want you to first like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, and also stay tuned to the end of the video where for the first time this week I'm going to be talking about the intro and why I chose that particular clip from that particular movie, what it means in relation, like why it is important, relevant to the discussion that we're having today, and it usually is. So stay tuned for that. I am in Dallas. I'm not in my basement. As you can tell, I'm in a hotel room in Dallas, and so I kind of wanted to maybe, this is the first time I've had the camera, so I brought it along with me, just for fun. I'm on a business trip, it's not a pleasure trip, I'm, I'm here for a conference, and I, I travel to this particular conference every year. So I thought it would be fun to maybe offer up some travel thoughts, I guess, thoughts about how I, I keep active and keep on my nutrition plan while I'm traveling. So, it's really easy in terms of nutrition, uh, it's easy for me. like it does take some foresight and some forethought to think about where you're going to be and where a grocery store is in relation to where you're going to be and then will you have a refrigerator in your room so let's say you have a mini fridge which a lot of hotels have replaced the mini bars with mini fridges so let's say you have one of those it's pretty easy to go find a whole foods nearby so i've been to whole foods is all around the country because i travel for business so i've been to a whole foods in portland Seattle, Denver, uh, San Antonio, Austin, Orlando, Miami, they're everywhere. Boston, there's a Whole Foods nearby. Minneapolis, St. Louis, I've been to Whole Foods is in all these places. Or there's a Trader Joe's, or there's just a regular grocery store, whatever. So you go in there, you get a couple of cooked chicken breasts, you, or and you add that, you add some, you know, some Greek yogurt, and you buy some protein bars and maybe some expensive jerky that you wouldn't normally buy, but hey, you're on, you got the company's paying, you know, so you got a per diem, so you're spending your, your meal allowance on groceries. It should be cheaper than, you know, a big fancy steak. So you can buy some things, you, you bring them back to your hotel room and you can plan out, you know, your meals based on that, just like you would at home, but you're on the road. So that takes some time. If you're really like in a time crunch and you don't have time to go to the grocery store or whatever, sometimes I will bring, canned tuna in my carry-on. I'll bring some protein bars. I may even go buy some some fancy sort of epic jerky stuff uh, beforehand just to bring along with me. So it's either you have time when you get here and you go to a grocery store and you stock up or you stock up beforehand with some things that you can bring through the x-ray machine uh, no problem. So that's pretty easy and even if you do have to go out to dinner because I often have to go out to dinner at night with you know, for, for these conferences, I got to go meet with companies and go have dinner with them. Uh, I will just plan for that. I'll accumulate enough, I'll save up enough calories throughout the day such that at the end of the day, I've got enough room for a decent, you know, protein, whether that's a piece of steak or some chicken and some vegetables. And I'll just take it easy on desserts and take it easy on, you know, whatever other sides they have. You know, I won't eat the, the mashed potatoes or whatever comes with the, the salmon or chicken that I order. So that's, you know, it's eminently doable. It's no different than if you're eating out with your friends at home. It's just that you're on the road. So it's not like a license to just eat whatever you want, but you know, so you should, you should plan accordingly and, and treat it like a business trip, like it is. So it's helpful that I don't drink at all because that helps me stay on track. 
uh, probably easier than, than other people that have to go travel for business and then end up drinking a lot. So I don't know how to handle that. Sorry. But so that's that's travel tips. morning YouTube it is 429 I'm about to take a trip 30 minutes north before my conference starts just to check out a gym just to check out a guy who has uh, a barbell company so I'm gonna go check all that out this is what I do when I'm on the road I go and uh, explore the fitness community I travel around quite a bit for work and it's given me an opportunity to explore a lot of different gyms. It's usually fun to find a, a barbell gym, not just like a traditional commercial gym, but often I try to find, you know, a unique spot where the reviews are good or it's interesting to, you know, based on the website or it's close by. Um, and so I did that and this, so this morning I woke up at 4.30, I drove 30 minutes away from the hotel, so that wasn't too close, but it was worth it because I got to meet the owner of a barbell company called Mars, no sorry, BATL Performance, which they have the Mars Bar, which is the bar I got to try out. I'll show you a little video clip of it. It's pretty neat. So I'm, I'm just trying to explore, you know, some unique fitness products in the market and trying to, trying to locate, you know, an opportunity where I could maybe get involved with the fitness business. So if you have any of those things and you come across this channel, you know, let me know. Obviously, I'm, I'm not interested in sponsoring somebody's nutrition line or some other generic thing, but if it's a unique product or a unique thing uh, that needs funding or whatever, I'm interested. So that was, you know, an interesting, I went out to destination, I bought this shirt, I got to lift weights, it's a giant gym out in uh, Allen, Texas, I think it is, it's called Destination Dallas, it's really cool, so that was worth it, I got out there at like 5.15, lifted weights and worked out until about 6.30, rushed back here, got to the conference, had a bunch of meetings all day, and then I went to the Mavs game tonight where I bought this hat. So that's been pretty cool. And then tomorrow morning, my hedge fund gym bros um, that you do CrossFit in like New York and, and Houston, they traditionally at this conference, we will go to, to a CrossFit, local CrossFit gym and we'll do a workout together. So that'll mix things up a little bit and it'll be fun just to, to hang out with those guys and, to, and to, to do something I don't usually do. So. It's a group, you know, group workout, CrossFit. It's a little bit different than working out alone in your garage with headphones on, but should be fun. I did it last year, and and it's fun to just sort of network with other other fitness guys, even if it's not your thing. I wanted to give you a quick update on how the bulk is going. So last video I started about talking about the bulk. I launched the bulk on Saturday. That means I'm trying to gain 15 pounds from 175 up to 190. Uh, really, it's only been a few days into it so this is Wednesday night it was, it was Saturday so not really much to report the weight I guess the big surprise for me because I've never done this before is usually when I eat like a giant cheat meal or if I lose control and just eat a ton um, and just sort of have to deal with it the next day usually the weight spikes way up and I think that's because you know I'm eating a lot of sugar or carbohydrates or whatever that soaks up a lot of water and then the water is retained overnight, and so you, you usually see the scale go up several pounds. So what I was expecting was when I started this bulk, which is adding 500 calories to my 2,000 calorie maintenance, I was expecting the weight to sort of spike up on the first day, and that didn't happen. So that was kind of a surprise, and I'm, I was happy about it, obviously, but it's ticking up nice and slow, and I'll give you guys an update on the stats and where, they're, where they are. I'll, I'll put it right here on the screen as we're talking and it's still very early so tough to tell and I need to get more data to, to see if it's going well but uh, we'll see it I'm just I'll just keep eating and, and see how fat I can get but so that's the bulk in terms of the volume that I've been doing so I, I did start a new program on Saturday it does have a little bit more volume and what's come with that is some delayed onset muscle soreness which is normal so if you haven't weight trained in a while and you start a training program usually the very next day after that first day 
you're feeling a lot of soreness sort of all over and it's sometimes debilitating or it seems debilitating when you first wake up. And so I've had some of that in my chest and that's just because I did a ton of dumbbell bench press on the first day uh, as part of the program. There's a bunch of myo reps at the end of, this, end of the workout which is sort of a repeated volume thing where you're resting only for like 20 seconds in between efforts of trying to get five reps or so. So you end up doing a ton of reps and it, this is over the last three three months or so, I have been focused on the bench, I mean on the overhead press. So my dumbbell bench press has, has not happened. I haven't been doing it a lot. And so uh, when the, so that means that when, you know, when I introduce this new novel stimulus to, to my, uh, to my body, then delayed DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness occurs. So that's nothing to worry about. I trained through it the rest of the week and I plan to continue to train through it. So with all that being said, that's it. Uh, hope you guys are having a great week and remember, keep it on the DL. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. Just wanted to give a quick note. So the Trading Places clip at the beginning, that was from Trading Places, Eddie Murphy movie. I've seen it a bunch of times. It's a Philadelphia movie, a classic comedy. And it that part where he talks about being a karate man and being bruised on the inside was really how I was feeling this week in relation to how sore my body was, just with all that novel stimulus stuff that I talked about earlier in the video. So my body hurts, but you can't really tell. And so as I'm gingerly walking down the stairs, kids are like, what's wrong with you? Did, did something bother you? And I'm just like, I'm a karate man. I bruised on the inside. So I wanted to use the, the Eddie Murphy clip. And so it was a good chance for me to try to splice in some of my footage with footage from a movie. And so that was pretty fun. And, and I'll probably do some more of that going forward because it's a whole lot easier than recreating an entire clip myself. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Stick around.